What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back. Talking Mets to Rob. How's everybody doing? Before I get into the Shane Bieber to the Mets, uh, just so you guys know, if you enjoyed this video, please press that like button to get it out there to more people. And if you enjoy my content, enjoy my videos, guys, and want to see more, please press the subscribe button and click that notification bell so you can get all the, all the updates on when I post my videos when I go live. All right, guys, so Shane Bieber to the Mets. Now, I want to start off by saying this is a huge hypothetical, but I want to look into it because it's the Cleveland Indians is basically a yard sale with the Cleveland Indians. It seems like Jose Ramirez could be on the move. And you know what? Maybe everybody can be on the move for the right price. And the reason why I want to focus on Shane Bieber is because he's one of the best pitchers in baseball and he's young controllable, and cheap. Now, when it comes to the Mets and Shane Bieber, there's a lot of things that you can look at and be like, why would the Mets give up so much to get Shane Bieber? Well, there's a few reasons for that, guys. One reason is he can be that stepping stone when DeGrom starts to decline a little bit. He can be that number one guy. He's young enough. He's only 25 years old. Very good pitcher. Obviously won the Cy Young in 2020. He's a dominant pitcher. He was the best pitcher in the American League. One of the best pitchers in baseball. He can be that gap between from the DeGrom to Bieber. Can be that ace type of pitcher. And that's a good way for the Mets to use their prospects wisely in a trade to acquire Shane Bieber. Now, when it comes to Shane Bieber, what is he as a player? What is his stats? Well, we're going to look into it right now. So in 2018, at 23 years old, his first year in the majors, he was 11 and 5, a 455 ERA, 114 innings, gave up 13 home runs, 23 walks, and 118 strikeouts. Really good year for somebody who just came up into the league. Really good. Now, the ERA was a bit high, but again, you know, throwing them to the Wolves. First year in the league, he was still 11 and 5. The Indians did score a lot of runs for him, but at the same time, he was pretty good. He pitched well, didn't give up a lot of home runs. He had 19 starts, so it wasn't too bad. It was less than a, a home run per game. So, really good. Now we're going to go right into 2019. At 24 years of age, he was an all-star. He was he was voted fourth on the list as a Cy Young. So, he was just as good as many pitchers in baseball in the American League. And he was voted three spots behind the individual who won the Cy Young in 2018. So he was already establishing himself. Here's a, here we go. We got a 15-8 and eight record, 3.2 ERA, three complete games, two shutouts, 214 innings. Gave up 31 home runs and 40 walks. And he struck out 259, the highest in his career in the three years he's been in the league. Excellent year. All-star caliber year. 2019, not only was he an all-star, but he was fourth in a Cy Young voting. Very good. So in 2018, I did make a little mistake, but in 2019, he was voted fourth best for the Cy Young Award. Excellent year. 2020, his Cy Young Award year. And he had, he was fourth in the MVP voted. For a starting pitcher, he was fourth. That's excellent, guys. So when we look at 2020, he was 25 years old. He was 8 and 1, 1.63 ERA, 77 innings, 7 home runs, 21 walks, 122 strikeouts. Excellent year. Best pitcher in the American League. Probably the best pitcher in baseball. He was excellent. He was better than Bauer. No doubt. He's dominant. And he pitched in the American League. He's an excellent pitcher. He's young. He's controllable. And could be a guy that can be an ace on this Mets team when DeGrom starts to decline in the coming years. This is a big hypothetical. This can possibly happen. He could be packaged with Jose Ramirez as well when it comes to a big-time blockbuster trade. Now, that's something the Mets can really look at. You know, they spent they wanted to spend $40 million on Trevor Bauer, who is a mediocre 
at best pitcher. He might have found something in 2020 when it came to spin rate and everything like that, but they were willing to pay Trevor Bauer, who is in the middle of the road type pitcher, $40 million. Yes, you got to pay uh, other players on this team. You got to pay Lindor. You got to pick a 40. You might have to pay Syndergaard. But at the end of the day, this gives you an option when it comes to Shane Bieber, of not re-signing Noah Syndergaard. That's a big deal. That gives you a chance to focus on the extension with Lindor and Conforto. And Shane Bieber can slot right into that number two behind DeGrom and eventually take over DeGrom as the ace when DeGrom starts to decline a little bit uh, in the next, say, four years or so. Now, with Shane Bieber being controllable, We'll look at his contract. So in 2021, he's making a league mini- minimum of $575,000. In 2022 to 2024, he is arbitration, el- arbitration eligible for the first time in 2022, and then ARB2, ARB3, and then he becomes an unrestricted free agent in, in 2025. So if you look at it, at the age of 29, 29-30, he'll be a free agent. If he projects to be what he's going to be, and getting better and better each year. There is no reason why the Mets can't trade for him. Might have to give up a lot, but not to to trade for Shane Bieber and actually give him a contract and sign him to long-term, just like he did DeGrom around the same age. It's really a possibility that the New York Mets could potentially look at this and be like, if we were willing to give Bauer $40 million, we can afford to give up two prospects. Might be big prospects. We'll get into that a little later. Give up two prospects, big time prospects, for Shane Bieber. It, I think it's worth the cost, and especially he's going to be cheap. He's young. You get him at 25, 26 years of age. Put him right behind the ground. You push everybody back in the rotation. You know, you got the Grom. You got Bieber. You got Carrasco, you got Stroman, you got Peterson. You push everybody back a slot, it makes your rotation that much better. And we would have one of the best rotations in baseball. We talked about it with Bauer. If Bauer was put into that rotation with the Mets, it would be probably the top two rotations in baseball. You put Shane Bieber behind the Grom, you have the best rotation in baseball. There is no doubt about it. It's very hard to deny that. Now, when it comes to a trade, and you would be like, what the hell would the Mets have to give up to get Shane Bieber? Well, here we go. This is what we're going to look at right here. What the Mets have to give up. So this is what I think the Mets could actually do to get Shane Bieber to the Mets. Now, obviously, Francisco Alvarez is the second best prospect in the Mets farm system. And you can be like, Rob, wow, you know, that's our catcher of the future. Great, but Francisco Alvarez in the next four years might not be up with this team because you got James McCann. You could say, yeah, you, maybe when he's ready, you can bring him up, put him put him as the backup to McCann, and then work his way into the majors. Yeah, you can do that, but there is no guarantee with any prospect that they're going to be what you expect them to be and be the caliber of player that we expect Francisco Alvarez to be. But why would the Cleveland Indians want him? Well, they don't want to start paying Shane Bieber during arbitration eligible years because he will get probably six, seven, eight, nine million dollars, possibly ten million dollars in that first arbitration eligible year. Cleveland clearly doesn't want to pay anybody, doesn't want anything to do with money coming out of their pocket. They probably don't want to pay that. So it's a possibility that Shane Bieber could be on the trade block. This is only hypothetical, but I want to bring it to your attention because since the Mets didn't get Bauer, they might be looking at all avenues to improve this team in the rotation as well. So here we go. Francisco Alvarez and Carlos Cortez. Why do I put Carlos Cortez in there? Well, they clearly lost Francisco Lindor to the Mets and they traded them. They might possibly lose Jose Ramirez at third base. Carlos Cortez is projected to be a second baseman, but he is filling out. He is getting bigger. He can possibly play third base. So that fills the gap 
for the Indians. And Cortez is expected and projected to be into the majors e this year. This is what the projection says on MLB.com, that he, he would be ready to go and projected in 2021. So he could be a major league ready type of player. And that could help the Indians right away. Francisco Alvarez is one of the top prospects in the game and number two overall in the Mets system. The reason why I'm, I wouldn't put Mauricio in here is because I think Cleveland would be looking for a catcher and they would be looking for infield depth. And Carlos Cortez is the 17th ranked prospect in the Mets system. But I think the Indians will look to use him right away. Ronnie Mauricio might not be ready yet. And I don't, that's why I don't think they might want him. But, you know, you might have to throw him in there and take away Cortez. But this is what I would do. And I would think this is a pretty decent and fair offer for a team that's not going anywhere. And you're going to have a disgruntled Shane Bieber on a team that's not good, who is going to be arbitration el eligible after the 2021 season. And Cleveland is probably going to look to trade him because they're probably not going to want to spend that money. Now, just because this is hypothetical doesn't mean that we can't look into it and why I want to bring it to your attention of this could be a possibility if the Mets really are all in and trying to get a pitcher because clearly they want Trevor Bauer. So clearly they don't think this rotation is good enough to get where they want to be. And Cohen and Sandy Olsen talked about the three to five year window. This team has the Winter World Series. This team is a win-now team, guys. You have Jacob DeGrom that we wasted two Cy Young Award years, and this team did not make the playoffs. They weren't even really competitive for the most part. We can't keep on waiting and losing out years of greatness from Jacob DeGrom and not make the playoffs and be competitive in the NL East and dominant in the playoffs. We can't keep on waiting and waiting, and then DeGrom starts declining, and then we have nobody to back up and fill into that role as a number one. Shane Bieber can be that guy in a few years when Jacob DeGrom starts declining a little bit because he will decline at some point. We don't know when. I don't expect it to be in next year. I don't expect it to be in three years, but when Shane Bieber is ready to take that number one spot, you have a pitcher to take over for Jacob DeGrom that you can trust. And Shane Bieber, Shane Bieber is that guy. So to recap, the Mets would get Shane Bieber and the Indians would get Francisco Alvarez and Carlos Cortez. Obviously, players can be different. Ronnie Mauricio might have to be in a deal. It really depends on what the Indians like. But at the end of the day, the Indians have Rosario. They have Jimenez. So they got their shortstop and their second baseman. Carlos Cortez, I think that probably can fill into third base, no problem. And the Indians will have their catcher as well. And Alvarez ain't projected to be up for another year or two. So obviously the Indians are rebuilding. It seems like they're doing a fire sale with all their players. It seems like Jose Ramirez can be on the move. And I feel like Shane Bieber is going to be on the move. He's, a, he's a, one of the best pitchers in baseball who's on a really bad team. And they're clearly not trying to win. So why do you expect the Cleveland Indians are going to expect to start paying Shane Bieber when it comes to arbitration eligible years? I don't think so. And maybe they will use Jose Ramirez and Shane Bieber in a big package and have a big blockbuster. Maybe it could be a three-team deal. I don't know. But hypothetically, and what I feel the Mets, if they're really focusing on pitching, which they clearly are, they feel like this rotation is good, but it's not good enough to get them where they want to be, get them to the promised land. And I think this will do it. Maybe they are looking into it. We don't really know, but I feel like the Mets should look into Shane Bieber. I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget, guys, please press that like button to like this video so it goes out to more people. And hit that subscribe button, guys, so you can get all the latest videos, all the live streams, all the notifications you want when I post a video. All right, guys, thank you for watching. And as always, let's go Mets.